Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Make It Miniature. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined today by Elizabeth and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Beth, tell us what you chose today. All right, well, I, I just decided on this this week and, and I pulled it out of um, Modern Potluck, which is, um, has, is a really cool book. And this was, so it's not really, you know, designed for miniature, but I made it miniature. Uh, it was Phoebe's Moroccan inspired shepherd's pie. Um, so I put them in ramekins. And so what I really liked about this, first of all, is that um, what made a Moroccan is just the spices that they used, um, Par Parisa being one of them. I didn't have that. I put, I had my own uh, red pepper sauce that I'd made um, in the freezer and added a little more cayenne pepper. But anyway, what also made it um, unique as a shepherd's pie was that it was mashed potatoes and carrots. So it was a really pretty color. And it also included uh, lemon juice and olive oil, which was similar to that other, which I realized was also a lamb dish that was that Greek style. But um, anyway, so it's, quite, you know, not a creamy uh, mashed potato. So, um, and then also it included, instead of keys, peas and carrots, it was uh, greens, winter greens. So I, I had kale, chopped kale, and then um, some mixed greens, which was spinach and chard, um, chopped that up. And, and then you had, I had ground, I did end up using ground lamb. I wasn't going to, and then I decided to just do it. And it was, it was, it was good. Um, with a little tomato sauce, wait, tomato paste, a couple tablespoons of that. Uh, anyway, so, and cumin and what were the other, um, I don't remember, but uh, like I said, I added cayenne pepper. Uh, so I really loved the look of it because it was that lamb and green. And then I'll, here, here's a picture of the ramekins. Um, and then that orange uh, carrot, orange potato top, which mine, uh, was a little lumpy, so it wasn't a smooth color, but it was bright and I really liked it a lot. And then I also topped it with feta because that was what I did on that other one. So it was really good, but I didn't have enough ramekins. So I ended up making just a small um, uh, casserole for my daughter and her family to eat. And, uh, but we had enough to have dinner, lunch, and then a, one to put in the freezer for next week. So it was really good. That sounds good, Beth. Was it pretty straightforward, easy to put together? It really, really was. It really was. Yeah. I mean, it was nice that I had the time to do it because I, I made it in shifts, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yes, totally straightforward because, you know, there's a lot of times where I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to make for dinner. I have ground meat. And I might have some greens and I never would have thought of making a shepherd's pie. And also the carrots adds that bonus level of nutrition. So um, that is definitely something I will incorporate in the future. Uh, probably a big one. It's a little more labor intensive to have these little ones. But um, I also ended up Googling uh, just, I was looking to see if I could find the exact recipe and I didn't, but I found several other recipes that were Moroccan inspired and they had like raisins in it. And that really, I can understand that, but that's not, that's not the way I wanted to go. I really like the lemon tang and the greens. So good one. Thanks for uh, coming up with the, the category. So um, Elizabeth, do you have, what did you share with us? I mean, what will you share? What yeah. do you make? Okay. Yes, I will share. Um, this recipe came from the New York Times and um, 
it was suggested as part of a Valentine's dinner for two um, kind of set of recipes, um, which worked really well for us. We celebrated Valentine's Day last week um, and wanted to stay in. And so I was enthused by these suggestions. And um, the recipe is for personal sized beef wellingtons. Um, I do not prepare very much red meat, so I'm often pretty daunted by it, uh, but this seemed like nearly foolproof. So I was very excited to give it a try. Um, you probably know this, but I'm just going to say for anyone listening, so a traditional beef wellington is like the whole beef tenderloin and it's wrapped in puff pastry and then you slice it to serve to people. But um, for these, you bought two individual filet mignons and um, did it and it was, you know, one per person. So I bought two and um, you saute some mushrooms and shallots um, in a, just a pan with some butter. You add some herbs de Provence um, and then a small amount of red wine and a small amount of heavy cream and just let that reduce until it's really kind of jammy and saucy. And then you take a puff pastry sheet and roll it out until it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, cut it in half, place a scoop of the mushroom shallot mixture in the middle, and um, then uh, place the filet uh, right on top of it. Wrap it up, um, brush it with egg, and then let it chill in the fridge for about half an hour, and then you bake them depending on how rare you like your meat. They said anywhere from 17 to 30 minutes. I'm a little neurotic, so I did it closer to 30 because I'm just a little neurotic. Um, but I think it probably could have been a little more rare, but it was still very, very good. Um, oh, and I forgot to say the first step is that you do sear the steaks on all sides really quickly in a, in a pan with some salt and pepper, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was super easy. It was foolproof. I have a picture of them here coming out of the oven. You do let them rest for about 15 minutes because they do kind of continue to cook and blah, blah, blah. And then I have a second picture of them, of one of them cut open on the plate so you can see what it looks like inside. It was super delicious. Um, really, really, really easy. And like, even I could do it. Um, obviously it was a little more expensive. So not a weeknight weekly thing, but I was, I told my fiance that I totally would do it again for a special occasion. Or, um, my mom even mentioned that like, maybe for Thanksgiving, we would just like forget Turkey next year and do those. Cause it was, it was super good and easy. And, um, I think maybe even easier than doing like a whole beef wellington because that's just more complicated to cook properly. So um, yeah, I'd recommend it. That's amazing. I just to hear you say how easy it was is really cool because I've just like, I feel like I've been obsessed with beef wellington for the longest time. I've never had it because it looks so cool, but it always seems like so intimidating. I'm like that. I saw that recipe in the New York times and I just like glanced at it was like, Nope, not for me too hard. Like, so that's so cool that you tried it and that it's actually accessible. That's just, it's just awesome to hear. I can't wait to see your pictures. Yours too, Beth. I'm looking forward to seeing both of your pictures, but yeah, that's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, you know, I I use puff, puff pastry not very often. Um, it, was it literally one sheet that you put on it? Or how many sheets? Yeah, I mean, and you roll it thinner than it is in real okay. life. And again, I got pretty small fillets because we're not huge, huge, huge meat eaters. So they were not very big, like, you know, yeah, small. Um, but yeah, so you rolled it really thin and then cut it in half. And I felt like it was plenty of puff pastry and it held together. It didn't like leak or anything really. So. Cool. Very cool. And then what are you going to do with the rest of it? The, the puff, puff rest of the puff pastry? <laughs> I don't know. I don't use it very much myself. Yeah. So. Okay. But yeah. So it was, it was good. I do feel like 
both Beth and my recipe so far, I'm looking like the pictures are for some reason miniature things like make for particularly exciting photos. I don't know. Um, okay, Katie, what did you make? Okay, so I made uh, mini twice baked potato skins. So there, it's like a combination of twice baked potatoes and potato skins, except use miniature potatoes. So those little baby potatoes that you can get, um, I got them at Kroger, but they have them at Whole Foods Meyer. You just get a bag of them. It's about a pound and a half of these baby potatoes. And yes, I love miniature things. So I try and like look at the bags and see which ones have the smallest potatoes because they come out cuter. So um, anyway, you just take your potatoes and then you wash them and just prick them all over with a fork, like all over, be like thorough about it because you're going to put them in the microwave and they will explode if you don't thoroughly poke them. Trust me, I've done it. So you microwave them for four minutes and then you flip them over, microwave them for another four minutes take them out of the microwave and just let them sit because they're going to be super hot and you don't want to handle them yet. You will burn your fingers. So while those are sitting, you can do some other things. Uh, you're going to need some cooked bacon. You can cook that up, chop up some scallions, measure out your ingredients, all that stuff. So once your potatoes can be handled, you're going to cut them in half and scoop out the insides, leaving just a little bit of potato around the skins and put the scooped insides into a bowl. I use a grapefruit spoon for this because it's serrated edges make it really easy to get the potato out. So then you're going to take your potato skins and you're going to put them cut side down on a baking sheet and drizzle all over with olive oil and then use like a basting brush to just sort of spread that out over top of all of the potatoes and then sprinkle liberally with kosher salt stick those in the oven for 10 minutes and they're going to crisp up real nice. And then you can um, finish making your um, filling with your potato that you've scooped out. You're going to add cheddar cheese, Greek yogurt, green onion, melted butter, salt, and pepper, and just mix that up really well. When the potatoes are ready to come out of the oven, they'll be nice and crispy and brown. You um, flip them over and put the um, filling in the inside and then you stick them back in the oven under broil and they're going to go in for three to four minutes. Um, you don't want that you want to keep an eye on them because the broiler is uh, tricky to sometimes you definitely don't want them to brown completely on top so just like watch them and once they start getting a little bit brown pull them out. Um, and then you just top them with bacon and serve them and um, they disappear very, very quickly. I just recently made them for the Super Bowl and I've got this new tactic, which is to put out some other food first so that these last a little bit longer because people just really, really love them. So that is a great appetizer recipe to have in your arsenal. So do they end up being like pretty much like bite-sized, Katie? Yep, one or two bites for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're really cute. I have a picture, so I'll show you guys. Uh, they're they're just adorable and everybody loves them. Sounds, yeah, sounds really good because they would get so crispy with those kind of potatoes. Um, yum, yummy, yummy. It sounds slightly labor intensive just because they're small, but you know, worth the take, worth it. Sounds like. Yeah, and honestly, once you get going scooping out the filling and everything, it it was faster than you would think. Like this, really, gosh, if I had to, even with the cooking time, it probably only takes like a half an hour to put these together. Oh, very and nice. I've actually made them for myself before, just because I was like, I have no idea what to feed myself, and I have all the ingredients for this. Um, even with like a little bit larger potato, this recipe works. Love that idea. And also the grapefruit spoon. I use that for a lot of stuff. Um, kiwi and I don't know what else, but grapefruit, but um, <laughs> potatoes. I don't really, I'm not supposed to eat grapefruit anymore. So, uh, but yeah, potatoes, they're good for. So nice. Yep. 
That's a good tool to have for sure. All right. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share. We really appreciate you watching. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about today and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll, we will be talking about great grains. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share. Share a little recipe with